Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with the Cheesy Mice Rag Quilt. I am going to be finishing this today. So excited. If you're not familiar with this series, there's a playlist link down below. I believe there were two other episodes. This is episode number three, the final episode. And uh, I'm going to finish it today. It's a Friday. And then I will wash it and dry it. And then tomorrow, Saturday, I will take pictures, show it to you, finish it off that way. And I want to tell you that I do indeed have quilt kits for you guys, but I did not cut the batting. I made a good attempt. Like, I tried and I knew instantly that was just going to be too much work. So this is what you get. A mouse panel, just like I have. And that's for the front center. And then for the sides, you have these, just like I have. Six of those. And then for the borders, I cut the strips, but I left them the full width of the fabric. Because when you sew yours together, depending on, you know, your seam allowance, yours might be a little longer, a little wider. So full width of the strips, you can do like I'm going to do. I'll show you how to sew, you know, with the full width of the strip. I just sew the strip on and then I cut off what's extra. So I thought that was the best option. And then for the back, same thing. You have your four strips. You have your six blocks for B columns and you have three blocks for the A column. And um, link is down below. It's a eBay buy it now option and I have five of them. And this you can go print on my blog and it gives you the measurements that you need if you want to use your own fabric. And the link for that is down below also. It's time for me to add the strips around this. And I wanted to mention, because I just did some editing, uh, you know, the pieces that I cut for you, they're cut to size. All of these are cut to size for you. I know they were folded when I was showing them to you, but I didn't want you to think you were just getting enough fabric to cut your own. They're already cut. And like I said, the strips are cut four and a half inches wide, but I left them the full width of the fabric like mine, and I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So here's what we're doing. Now I have a choice. Oh, and if you really don't want batting, but you want something else, like I said, I'm not cutting the batting for you guys, not for this project. Uh, you can use flannel. You can even just use some other quilt cotton, uh, maybe a print you don't like or whatever. Use it up. It won't be um, as heavy as like if you use flannel, but it'll give it some weight. And if you want, like if you use flannel, my paper just flew off my sewing machine, you can, uh, you know, pick a color that you think will go good here because it will be showing on this side. And if you want something darker to make, you know, a darker border, you know, just do whatever you want. Now here's what we do. Very easy. We're going to be done this in no time. I'm going to add the sides first. So let me uh, show you how I'm going to do that. And, you know, I'm going to do matchy-matchy. But you could, if you wanted to, have this be on this side and then this be on the other side. So it would just be different, but I don't know. I'm just not liking that for some reason. So I'm going to take my strips. I'm going to just do matchy matchy. I know you can't see everything, but you'll know what I'm doing. So this strip is the print side down. See, print down. And then my very poorly cut <laughs> strip of batting. And this is wide also. So I still am leaving just the full width of the strip like this. And then this on top. And that's it. So I'm going to, you know, obviously make this, oops, you can't see yet stick out. I'm going to make this stick out more than this because I have selvages here to deal with and I want to make sure those get cut off. But then look, if I bring it all the way to the other end, see, there's going to be enough there. So I'm just going to sew it on first and then when I'm done, I will trim here. Now you can also look here. 
Uh, and I am going to look because I see something sticking out here more than I would like. So I'm just going to even that up a little bit. Like that. I see another little bump here I can get rid of. Good. That's all looking good to me now. I don't care about the top and bottom because I can trim that later. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm not going to worry about it. I can put this all together as I sew. Like this. And I want to pinch because I want my right sides popping up so I can snip. I'm not going to take you to the machine because I need the room. I can't be having a tripod on there right now. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to sew here and then I will snip right at my machine and I'll be right back. I'm done and I snipped this. I didn't snip the edge yet. And this is what I have at the top. So I'm just going to cut like that. And then at the bottom, I have a whole lot of batting left because my batting is so wide. So I only cut three strips for myself and I'm going to just piece them together to make my four strips that I need. And same thing, like that. I'm going to do the other side the same way. I have the two sides on. And now I'm going to do the top and bottom. And it's the same thing. I'm putting the back piece right side down. And then my piece of batting. And then my top. It's just going to finish it off. So nice. Okay, same old, same old. I'm pinching this way, and this is where I'm sewing. I am almost done. I put the top border on and the bottom. All I need to do is I need to sew all the way around, you know, maybe an inch in and snip. I, I did want to point out that these two final seams at the top and bottom where you join the row across you want to reinforce that just so that stays on but but trim it first and then go back and forth and stitch over it if you do the stitching back and forth and then you trim you're cutting your stitching so that doesn't do you any good so there's uh you know four places that you want to do that just to reinforce there so I'm going to sew all the way around. I am going to snip all the way around. But see how awesome it is that I don't have to snip all of this? It's like, it's so nice to snip as you go. And then I will um, wash it and dry it. And I'll be back tomorrow to show you the finished quilt. It is the next day and this is done. I have so much to say about this. <laughs> First of all, it's beautiful. Yes, I will go upstairs and put it on the bed for you, but I want to let you know a few things. I had a near heart attack when I checked my washing machine after I put this in for a little bit. I still have a lint tray in my machine. I don't think machines come with those anymore. And it was filled with batting. And I was like, oh my God, something came apart and all my batting came out. I couldn't believe how much batting it looked like. I picked it up out of the water and I tried to check and it looked like everything was okay. And I was like, could it possibly be just this batting that is sticking out? So I let it finish washing and then I, uh, you know, took it out after it spun dry and I looked at it really good and there's nothing that happened. Everything is sewn. It's not like there was a seam that came apart and something fell out. So it had to be just this. And when that is wet, it is big. So I'll show you. Hang on. This is still wet and I squeezed it. So, uh, but if this was like in water, it is huge. And it was, it was scary to see. I was like, what the hell? So I'm convinced that it's just this. I'm just really glad that I didn't cut the batting for the quilt kits because I know some of you would not want to deal with all of 
this just, you know, in your machine if you don't have a lint tray or anything like that. So I'm going to suggest if you make this, use flannel. Use flannel if you want. Or use batting, and if you don't want the mess, then um, you'll have to cut your batting smaller than the blocks, and you'll have to quilt it somehow. It doesn't have to be an X. Like, you could go around this, you know, just something to hold it in place. The other thing is, even though I absolutely love how this came out, there are some pieces like this. I don't know if you can see. Let me try to do that closer. See? that need to be trimmed. And I'm not going to bother trimming all that. If you get it on eBay, you're more than welcome to trim that if you want. Well, let me trim that one. <laughs> I'm a little bit weird about it. It looks really cool to have the cotton batting in there. I like it. Now here's the other thing. This batting bunched up in a couple of places. It's not disconnected, but I feel it puffier right there and then right here. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it looks all puffy, but that's not the batting. That's just the way things shrink, which is the part that I love the most. But again, since this is going on eBay, I want to let you know that. If you're worried about that, you could do some quilting. I'm not doing any quilting. I hate quilting quilts. I hate it. I don't like doing it. I don't like the looks of it. I like loose and puffy like this. So I just want to let you know you can do that or you could maybe just wash on gentle. I don't know. I would just throw it in the washer and dryer and be happy with it. I still have a little bit of um, fuzz here. And then this is the back side. Again, I'll show you that on the bed. And then the other thing is that little pen mark is still there. And it looks like this. I don't know if you can see it. Just disclosing those things because this will be uh, a penny auction on eBay starting at a penny with free shipping in the USA. Outside of the USA you can still bid but you have to pay the shipping. And there's a way to see an estimated shipping charge. So do that. Don't just bid, win, and then say, oh my god, the shipping is outrageous. You need to find that out in advance. Alright, let's just take this sucker upstairs. Oh, before I forget, it's 33 wide uh, from the sewn line to sewn line, not counting the ragging, and then uh, 40, let me look, 42 tall, a really good size for a kid. Um, let's go look at it. Here it is. I like the size. It's a nice size for a kid. They can wrap up in it, and it is very soft and comfy. You know, it's just nice and puffy. I really like the way it came out, and I love borders like that around a rag quilt instead of just a bunch of squares being put together. I think I'd always want to finish a rag quilt that way. I think we could even finish any quilt that way. If you don't like doing binding or whatever, just rag, you know, put a border around and rag the border. We'll have to do that one time. What else do I want to tell you? I will flip it over to show you the back side. Uh, let me do that now. And I like the decision that I made of just having the back be all one color. You know, it's just, uh, it's nice. I really like it. And I love having the front have all one color also because it makes the little mice blocks stick out. You know, they're the feature. So let me turn this sucker back over again. I did want to point out, see, like this stringy stuff right here? I'll trim that off. And, you know, once it's trimmed, and I'm sure after being washed another time, it's all going to fluff like this. And I really like it. It's so soft. I know some people wouldn't want to deal with the mess in the machine, but I love it so much that um, I think I'd always want to to use that batting just for the sake of that puffiness. I mean, it really does puff nice. All right, you guys, that is it for this. I will have another video up. I'm trying to do a quilting video or a video in a series every weekend, so do subscribe so you don't miss out. Lots of other videos on the way, too. So thank you so much for watching. Let's go check out all the links down below, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye!
You guys, yes, TV is on. I'm setting up to do pictures for the um, Buy It Now for the kit, and there's a mark on this one. It's not a pen mark. I didn't do that. I just opened them up. These are all folded. I haven't been touching them, and so I obviously got it like that. I had bought an entire bolt of these, and sometimes, you know, there's just little flaws. I never thought to check each and every one of them. I sold a shitload of these. See, there's nothing on this one at all. If there's one, I will check. Maybe just one with the uh, mark. I could uh, maybe just do that one separate at a little bit of a lower price. Maybe that's what I'll do. I don't know. I'm just sad now.